Welcome back to my shop. I am grateful to have you guys follow along with the P26 build. It's back on the bench uh, because I've been assembling some really fun parts that I've been working on here and there over the past couple of weeks. Uh, so really what this stems from is I really like to take these ARFs and dress them up because they lend themselves really well to this kind of activity. And why I say that is because they're kind of boring as they come from the factory. They're very, there's not a lot of depth. I talk a lot about depth on my, on my builds because when you add one little thing after another, after another, it adds stuff. And as a, it's like, seriously, the way art galleries are designed is to enhance light at different times. And when you go to a, an airplane field or an event uh, and you see a model in different light, you will see different things. And that is what I try to do with each of my models by adding layer upon layer. So let me turn you around and talk about a few things. And uh, for sure, I will be letting you guys have full access to the library of these parts. All right, so first uh, we'll take a look. I really like to go from nose to tail just for simplicity's sake. There is a lot of layering going on here. Uh, first and foremost, we have the stock uh, uh, ring here, but uh, the engine is very different. Now it's sized a little bit small, a bit intentionally because uh, I knew that the size of the motor was going to protrude a little bit far forward. And I knew that these uh, rocker covers were not going to fit essentially here. So it's a little bit of a scale compromise, but in addition to that, it adds a little bit of texture around this part. So it's a little bit off and also for good reason. Another thing worth mentioning here is that this is not the correct dummy radial engine for this aircraft. Um, this is a right cyclone. Uh, this is my friend Carl's R8. 1920-97. This would be a typical radial scene in like a B-17. Uh, but it's pretty close and I didn't want to reinvent the wheel on the radial. And this is an exceptionally good model. Very easy to assemble as well. Um, so yeah, this is, is not the, uh, the, the Pratt and Whitney that would normally go in this airplane. So uh, bear, bear with me on that. Uh, just because it was a lot easier and time, time efficient, as we shall say. Uh, that being said, each one of the cylinders is printed a front and a back, and then they are glued together. These are SLA printed, so that way you get lots of fine detail. Uh, in addition to that, I took some uh, wire that I had and stripped, I pulled all of the uh, copper out of it. Uh, you can see the copper right there. That way I'm left with just the insulation, save a little bit of weight and uh, use that for spark plug wires. Uh, the tubes here are aluminum tubes from K&S uh, Precision Metals, uh, polished with a little bit of mother's mag and wheel polish just on a drill and then cut to length uh, and then installed using some thick CA, some thick zap CA. From there, uh, once we have everything assembled, I had it mounted to the fuselage. There's a tab at the top and the bottom where it screws into the motor box and sits perfectly centered on the motor. The motor itself, uh, you can see on the inside, uh, was anodized blue and I used a little bit of silver paint to try to dull that out so it's not quite as obvious. Uh, usually the paint does not want to stick to the anodized aluminum anyway, so I'm not expecting it to stay there forever. Moving on from there, uh, I had to do this engine cover. This is a streamlining thing. Uh, I did it as scale as possible based off of visuals and measurements of where the engine is positioned, but knew that this part here was not necessarily going to be as accurate. Uh, but it does complete the look. Um, I also made these holes a little bit larger than scale for cooling our electric motor. Now the way the air flows, there's nothing blocking on the inside, but the air does flow in up through each one of these cylinder heads. And then there is a hole 
out the back. So there is air flow through there. A little bit constricted, but should be adequate because I've used this motor on other projects, like the Saab. The Saab is perfectly fine. So we've got that. This is where we get into more of the layering kinds of things. I had assembled everything together and I was looking at the front end of the airplane and I just thought it, it doesn't have enough texture. When you look at the reference pictures, there's just something missing. And this is where I get into simple little details. Um, two things I needed to add it. Uh, number one was the guns. Actually, the gun barrels are kind of hidden. Remember, this is called, nicknamed really, the pea shooter because it only had 30 caliber guns. Kind of small uh, for an airplane, only two of them. So a little anemic in the firepower, but the way they were positioned were on the side cheeks of the engine and fired through the cylinders and through the prop. So let me show you what that looks like. So coming around here, like I said, it's a very subtle detail, but I created some wood blocks in the back that are drilled uh, a hole through it that just extends it away. And then I ca these polystyrene tubes into place, painted them, and they are in perfect position for where the guns are. It's a subtle detail, but again, adds the depth that we're looking for. The last thing was the spinner. Uh, there's this little piece of texture here that I had to add. This is 3D printed and some silver paint. And uh, that's all it is. One, two, three, four holes and a cylinder. I sized this specifically to take my 13 millimeter socket wrench so that I can tighten and loosen the prop nut. It's just sandwiched between two aluminum washers and I've got uh, more than half of the nuts thread engaged. Uh, I'm considering whether or not to remove the inside nut or one or sorry the inside washer uh, but I do think I have sufficient thread engagement there for safety reasons. Uh, if you think you need more um, I'll tell you right now, I've had a number of people that have questioned some of my safety aspects uh, with thread engagement. Uh, if you have more than 50% of threads engaged on one of these normal um, nuts <laughs> on these props and you have sufficiently tightened it, you're fine. Maybe if you're going to 30,000 RPM on or 20,000 RPM on one of these like pylon racers, sure, you would want more thread engagement. I've never had one come loose and I fly a lot of electric airplanes. So if you want to chew me up for that, by all means, in the comment section, I'll go ahead and delete your post. All right. <laughs> Kidding aside. All right. I understand that there may be people that have concerns about this. And I'm just saying that in talking with a lot of people that are smarter than me, who are mechanical engineers, who have more experience than me, and who are machinists, that's three orders of experience beyond my own that suggest that this is sufficient for our application. All right? You want to go above and beyond? That's on you. Moving on. So to wrap up the front end, uh, all of this stuff, including this is 3D printed. I do most of my 3D prints in two methods. So again, I covered the jugs in SLA. Everything else is printed in ABS on my FDM, my Ender 3 Pro. From there, my post-processing is pretty straightforward. Some rough sanding if I need to, but mostly I do an acetone bath. I just literally paint acetone on it to smooth it out. From there, I'll do some uh, red body filler, uh, spackle putty uh, if I need to, sand that back, and then it's high build automotive primer, sand, prime, sand, however much I need, and then I do a final prime and then a paint. On this, in this case, the high build automotive primer usually comes in a gray or a dark gray. So because of a yellow base, you need to use a white primer. So use the white primer, use a yellow, and then used a matte clear coat. The entire airplane, except for areas of the windshield, will be in matte 
coloring. I do not want this airplane gloss. So moving toward the tail, we have a Venturi. Uh, this is also included in the, the link that I'm going to provide for you guys to a library. So a Venturi was used for some of the early instruments in aviation around this period. The idea uh, is that you're creating a vacuum because these radial engines didn't necessarily pull a vacuum that you could run all of your instrumentation off of. This particular Venturi design was actually modeled after a real mathematical derived model. Uh, so I imported that into Fusion 360, created a profile, rotated it to create volume, and then tried 3D printing it. I have the model in a full size. Uh, this is again, quarter scale model, so quarter scale Venturi. Um, but it didn't print very well, so I split it in two and glued it together. Uh, so I have both of those versions. If you want to try one way or the other, up to you. Uh, so other than that, I used a piece of plywood to CA to the side and then create a slot uh, through the fuselage and then use an additional piece of ply on the back side with a corresponding hole to reinforce that side. Let me show you a little bit what that looks like. So looking from the side here, you can see the ply plate that I created a slot for. And again, this is just CA to this and then some paint applied over top. Let me get the hatch off and show you the inside, what that looks like. So here's what we're looking at. We have the hole that goes in. And like I said, just a piece of plywood with a slot in it that I CA'd in place. Uh, I used thick CA because it has a longer cure time and is less brittle. So that helps reinforce that hole and the support of the Venturi. So moving aft again, uh, we're running into the cockpit, which is awesome because uh, there are some fun details. Uh, two things that I modeled, one thing that I did not. Uh, so the pilot, the pilot is 3D printed in one, two, three, four pieces. Uh, the head, which has a lot of detail, I did print in my SLA printer. And then the two arm pieces and the torso uh, I printed on my FDM printer. Now let's talk about the other two pieces that I designed first, and then we'll talk more about the pilot. Looking into the cockpit, you can see that the 3D printed instrument panel is in place and I've got gauges printed out too. Uh, covered those gauges up with some epoxy to give them that gloss finish hit them with a little bit of a uh, torch to help get the bubbles off the surface and let it cure. And it looks great. So this instrument panel is mostly scale. Uh, it is sized specifically for the model. Um, so you had to kind of play with the positioning of the gauges because it's kind of cut off, but it's mostly there. Okay. Um, I also provide a PDF of gauges to print off and then they're roughly in position again for you to uh, put in the hole. So everything sized, you can recreate all of this yourself. It's super easy. Um, yeah, let's move on to the headrest. Again, this is more for this specific model. Uh, normally this would be much longer but due to the fact that we have this piece, which I didn't really want to cut uh, from the hatch. Uh, so the hatch comes off like this and I didn't want to make that any longer and um, complicate this just for simplicity's sake, it's close enough. Uh, so there's a little bit of a pad here and uh, the stitching around there. I didn't necessarily model, but I did bevel this so it's nice and rounded out and then uh, did some screw heads as well uh, for securing it here. Uh, this is SLA printed, so I got it nice and smooth and I could maintain the detail of the screw heads and then just hit with some uh, flat black enamel and uh, I'll clear coat that with the rest of the plane. All right, so the pilot, uh, the, here's the pilot. <laughs> uh, so the pilot uh, is, you can get it the same way I got it. I bought it. Uh, I bought the model and I can print it as many times as I want. And in this case, I had to print it twice. Uh, given what was originally modeled and from the uh, person that uh, 
modeled it, said that it was uh, uh, originally modeled at one six scale or sized at one six scale. So I scaled it up, uh, printed it off and it was too big. It was too big to fit in the model itself given the, the width of the shoulders. So I had to scale it down. And honestly, that was a good thing because it didn't look quite right to begin with. Uh, it did look too big. The general feeling that I get on pilots is that they are sized easily, given that a one sixth scale pilot is easy if the person starts at six feet tall, so they just make the pilot roughly one foot tall. It's nice round math, it's convenient, it is not accurate for pilots. Most of the time, pilots they looked for the smallest dude possible to fit in these machines, okay? They were not big folks. So <laughs> it makes sense that the pilot would look a little bit too big, right? Uh, not to mention, six foot tall people were not common back in this time, in this era. So makes sense that the pilot would be a little bit smaller. So I'm happy with the size. Uh, I'm using the techniques outlined by Aces of Iron for painting. Uh, it's a lot of layers, a lot of layers to get all of this paint work done. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Sat down with a bunch of paints and uh, this, I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, again, you can see the bottom where I've got my infill for the arms. I had to cut this off at a specific height and uh, because of the different pieces, I used mesh mixer to cut the parts up a little bit so I didn't have to print as much and then I uh, sized and cut from there. So this is ready to glue in. Uh, once I <clears throat> finish painting out the interior of the cockpit, I think I'm gonna change the gray into like an olive drab or something like that. Need to check the markings uh, or my reference pictures. Uh, go back and I'll see if I can see into the cockpit at all from the mu museum. So there you go. So overall, I am very, very happy with how all of this is turning out. I think the model is just coming together very, very well. And I have a lot of really great details that are going to make this model really pop. And I think you'll agree with me that this model has way more potential than I am doing right now for it but this is just giving a taste of what you can do. So again, this has been a lot of little bits of time here and there. This isn't something I can necessarily show you. It's really easy stuff. It's just a few minutes here, do this. A few minutes there, do that. Um, what did take a bulk of time was the layers and painting for the pilot. Uh, and that's just a matter of sitting down and do it. I only started painting my own pilots recently, so yeah, I still have room to grow, particularly around the reflections in the goggles. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to do reflections. That's kind of a different one for me to visualize and how you paint it and do reflections anyway. So yeah, learning new things, having fun with this, all right? That's sort of the, the name of the game. So moving on from here, the model needs to be flipped over, put the wings on, and we're gonna start running the wires. I'm excited to get into that hardware with you guys. And there's gonna be a lot of Dubro parts going into that. And until then, make sure you're heading to Dubro.com and getting the parts that you need for your builds and using code Josh10 at checkout, which I don't get any benefit from. This is purely for you guys and my affiliation with Dubro. Use it, use it, use it. And until next time, keep building your flying works of art.